Tesla had finally started pushing the version 10 update throughout the, its entire fleet. Uh, and this is one of the biggest upgrades that I've seen. And it's got so many amazing things. It's got karaoke, it's got Spotify. But the star of the show, of course, is the smart or enhanced uh, summit. So uh, grown men around the world are playing with their toy cars now as they're getting it. As you probably see a lot of videos on YouTube with, with people racing them, with people trying not to hit pedestrians, with people walking them like dogs. Well, that's me. So um, stay tuned. I'm going to post that video on my social media. But uh, I don't have a Tesla anymore. So I did the best thing. And I drove all the way to my friend Eli Burton of My Tesla Adventure. And uh, he's been playing with it as well. And he's going to show me uh, some of the cool things that he's discovered. Uh, there are other things with the self-driving visualization features uh, that I don't think people are talking about. But I think it's pretty cool. He's going to tell us about that. And of course, we're going to show you the demo. And he's just kind of uh, going to update us on what it is, how it's working, and where the expectation of this uh, is going to be uh, moving forward. All of this is coming coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you the uh, the video that I shared earlier with Eli uh, when uh, we went to a parking lot, I think it was a Walmart or whatever, uh, and we played around with the car. It is really cool. I have to say it's really cool, um, you know, and you know, I, I'm going to give you uh, some final thoughts, <laughs> Jerry Springer style, um, after you watch all of this. But I got to tell you, I mean... We are in a future, you know, when when a car can pull out of the parking spot and meet you in front of your house or or restaurant or whatever, you know, th this is this is amazing stuff. And, I, I, and no one else has done it before. And, and, and I think this is really, really cool that this is a major manufacturer that has it as a main, main release. I mean, it is in beta, but people have it and they're playing around with it. The reactions from the people are amazing. Like, there are a few people in the parking lot where we did it were just absolutely stunned. So this is good stuff. So uh, before uh, before I uh, uh, you know segue my way to the interview, of course a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out their all electric SUV coming to the U.S., coming to Europe uh, in about a year and a half, depending where you're at in the in the queue. Over fifty thousand people already reserved and buy uh, this car starting about forty five thousand American dollars, forty five uh, uh, euros in uh, Europe, but zero dollars and zero euros to reserve one. So go to the description of this video, reserve your Byton today. All right, without further I do uh, here's my conversation with Eli and uh, some of our um, some of our fun with his Raven P100D Tesla Model S. All right, so you played around with this for what a day or two now? Yeah, about the last two days. What are your thoughts? So for me, the what makes the V10 software update that Tesla just rolled out significant? It is enhanced summon. This is one of those features that was promised to eventually come as part of full self-driving, and now it's here. Well, uh, I mean, there are quite a few other features as well, and I think we kind of everybody already, we went over this many times, but this is something that really stands out because this is the first time ever where a car is moving <laughs> and turning and navigating uh, without a driver. Um, you know, how, how big of an achievement do you think this is? I, I think it's huge. It's a really big deal. I mean, it, it's one thing what Autopilot and Navigate and Autopilot are already doing, but relying on lane lines. And it's impressive. Navigate and Autopilot is a very impressive, very reliable feature in my 40,000 miles of experience. Um, but Navigate uh, Enhanced Summon, we now have very much AI-driven uh, self-driving feature. No person in the car backs itself out of a parking lot and navigates itself through uh, open spaces without direct lane lines approaching situations that involve turns and it's doing it without a human even involved and i'll tell you what it is very much a beta feature so when it runs you see it being very cautious it moves very slow some of its movements are kind of jerky as it's assessing the situation you know it'll come up to a place where it's got to make a turn and i've actually watched it wait for like three and a half four seconds while it, like there wasn't any cars coming but it was clearly assessing the environment and deciding what to do next it's cool to see and it's a really big deal too that tesla's done this because no other car companies even demoed something like this as an even remotely coming feature. Now there are two kind of uh, I think purposes or or good things that are going to come out of this feature. One is obviously convenience. I think somebody already uh, summoned their Tesla when it was raining, right? And you don't have an umbrella. That's a great case. Uh, but at the same time, you know, showcasing the technology, right? When when people are going to start seeing this, going like, whoa, 
this is way ahead. Like this is I, I I'm 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 in a sci-fi movie, right? Um, now obviously the showcase part of it is is here, right? And people are already impressed. But do you think it's good enough right now to actually be a convenient uh, feature that will people people will actually use, or do you think it's a little too slow right now? I think it's going to depend on the parking environment you're in. For me, it's much more of a really cool wow factor at the moment, more so than convenient. Now, if it was raining, I would actually wait the time for it to summon to me so I didn't get wet. Uh, for the most part right now, I'm going to still walk to my car in the parking lot to get it unless I'm demonstrating it to somebody. But it's really incredible to see where it's already at right now. And knowing the way these features advance, that now Tesla's going to have all these users operating it. That data is going to feed back to their development process that's going to result in this really improving. So, yeah, I mean, it's very much a beta. You, have to, you need to be line of sight of the car. You need to be paying attention to it. Uh, you're responsible if it hits something that it wasn't supposed to, which I haven't had any close calls or anything like that yet. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think right now is very much a beta feature they're letting us have access to. I think the convenience of it, the true convenience of it, will probably come in the next update. Now, do you do you, what? What are the reactions that you've heard or seen from people so far as as they watch the car without the driver? You know, go, you know, going past them. One of the first demonstrations, a girl walked by and she's like, "Oh, are you guys taking a selfie?" And I was like, "No, I'm summoning my car." And she kind of stopped, just stunned, rather speechless, and watched by by uh, Model S that's here behind us drive itself right up to where I was standing. And she's like, "Wow, that's kind of creepy and cool at the same exact time." I I, I mean, yeah, and, and we're going to do this a little bit later as well. And I I, I can't wait to see the reactions of the people. Uh, and and you know, I, they should. I mean, I I the thing I told you in one of my one of our other conversations where my mom called me the other day, or it was a few weeks ago, where somebody did it who was probably participating in the early what do you call it early early access program. Yeah, and, and she was like, somebody just summoned their car, you know, right in front of me. This is amazing, right? And she's never impressed by any of the stuff that I'm involved in. So that says something, right? Especially for the older generation. Yeah, this is one of those wow technologies to watch a car driving itself without a human inside. It's one thing with autopilot, and there's still a driver there, so there's a sense of that the human's still in control. But when there's not even somebody in the car and watching it wheel itself around to you, it really starts giving you the sense that it starts giving you the sense that there is AI involved in this because there's no human in the loop. Yeah. All right. Well, now we mentioned there are a few other features in the car uh, that uh, and, and we'll talk about it in just one second. But just really quickly, walk, walk us through how it works. Like you said, how far away from the car you have to be? Do you have to be pressing a thousand different buttons? Like how do you actually tell it where to park? And would it when it comes to you, can it also park itself or for now it's just going to plant itself in one spot? So the way it works is there's a, a radius ring that sits around your location. I believe it's 150 feet. Uh, maybe two, it's 200 feet. I actually don't know the exact number on that. So there's a radius ring that sits from where the car is parked, and you can mark any location in that ring to come to. It's got a default to your location, but if you want to move it from that or the GPS is off, you can manually drop on the map where it is. And then you hold down uh, Come to Me, and while you're holding down the button, the vehicle will continue the process of backing out of its parking spot, driving forward out of its parking spot, depending where it's at, getting in the line, and following the roads it needs to to get to you in the parking lot. So you do have to stay holding it down the entire time, and I think that's one of the safeguards that if you assess that it's doing something too risky or maybe it's going to hit something, whatever, if you let go of the come to me, it will immediately stop where it's at. Now, for my testing so far, the vehicle will just come to the place that you mark. It's not come approaching a place that you mark as a parking spot and then lining itself up for a, for a park. Uh, it's not. It hasn't done that in my experience at this time. I'm sure it's common because I mean it does have a self parking feature already. I mean, yes, it would be com it would be combining the summon with self park that already exists and linking those two up. I, I think obviously that's going to come. All right, so just like I mentioned, there are quite a few other features. Uh, some of them are actually surprising that Spotify made it uh, in a karaoke, and, you know. But but we, we've talked about it before. Um, there's some interesting additions to uh, the actual uh, navigation and and uh, autopilot that I don't think people are talking about. But I just saw them, and I'm pretty freaking impressed. It's pretty cool. Tell us about it. Yeah. So along with Enhanced Summon, they made another improvement to Autopilot, and that is a big one is around the visualizations and sh and showing you that how many more things a vehicle is now seeing. So one of them is the vehicle now accurately identifies other vehicles on the road around you. And by say, and I say identify, I mean identifying the vehicle type. Before, every vehicle larger than a car was like a bus or a van, and every vehicle larger than a van was a semi-truck. Now it's actually identifying crossovers visually. It's identifying pickup trucks. Um, it's identifying different types of small cars, motorcycles that already did, but it's doing that even better. But where it's really gotten cool is now it will show you oncoming traffic in the other lanes. And it'll also show you lane type. So if the lane on the left of you is a double yellow, 
autopilot now sees that and that'll be reflected. The lane to the right of you is a passing lane, that'll be reflected as well. Um, and even they even went one step further with lane change, and this is really cool. When Navigate on Autopilot activates the auto lane change, it shows you on the visual UI where the location is that it's planning on going, and so you can see where your mer your lane change is going to happen in relation to the other cars next to you. So it gives you a lot more confidence in, in Autopilot's capabilities, and it also shows you that AI, the Autopilot's AI is now processing even more variables and more information than it was before. Do you think this is one of this this V10 update? Do you think it's the the, the biggest step you have seen Tesla make between the uh, two major uh, updates? I would say that Enhanced Summon was a huge step, really on its own, an entirely new feature. Was would I say this is the single biggest improvement to the Navigate on Autopilot? Um, I would say the last one was probably bigger. This seems to be much more of refinement of a of a big feature improvement they made about six months ago. Anything that you might be a little bit disappointed in, in, in think there's maybe some room to for improvement and in, in hopes that they're gonna maybe up, you know do a few updates in the next couple of months. I, I'm really excited to see Navigate on Autopilot, not sorry, not Navigate on Autopilot, see Enhanced Summon become more confident. It's very clearly that like, you know, you let your 12 year old try to drive across the parking lot stage. But don't. But don't, don't do that. But I think a lot of people back in the day, that's how you teach your kid to drive. You go to the parking lot late at night. I mean, I drove that way as a kid. Me too. Yeah, exactly. It very much had that feel right now. I look forward to seeing in a few months, once they've gotten additional testing, all this data pushback, seeing that improve where like, you know, it starts staying tight when what would be that side of the lane, seeing it drive more confidently, seeing it move a little bit quicker. All right. Now I have to say one of my, my disappointments that, uh, I, I mean, I kind of knew this is kind of regulation thing is that, you know, usually people like to do karaoke as they're driving, you know, road trips. But right now, you know, you have the feature, but as soon as you shift it to drive, what happens? As soon as you switch the karaoke mode to drive, the lyrics go away. The song keeps playing, but the lyrics just disappear. And yeah, people like are crazy about like how many people sing in their car all the time. There was a series of videos I did on YouTube and Facebook a while back. They they got a ton of views, but generated an unbelievable amount of hate. And it was autopilot karaoke. My hands were still in the wheel of the car. It was me with a guest. We were just driving down the road singing. I've never had so many hate comments on every platform across the board as then when we did that. They were acting as if we were going to like kill their children and run over their dogs, you know, while on autopilot on the freeway. Yeah. And yet there's so much hate to like, you know, for Biden and Porsche that actually have separate essential areas or screens for the driver where this could be possible I'm interested in what the regulations are going to be all about you know uh, as far as sharing the screen but uh, all right well listen this is exciting I'm sure we'll play with this car a little bit more in the next uh, couple of weeks and uh, definitely looking forward to the updates uh, meanwhile tell us uh, about your uh, podcast what's coming up next and what have you been doing and where people can follow you so I'd say the biggest thing we have coming up next is the my Tesla adventure event on October 26th uh, this the registration page is going to be up for that tomorrow it's going to be on Eventbrite you can also find it on our Facebook page at my Tesla Adventure. So we got the final details. We are doing a meetup at the Tesla Supercharger in Mountain View, California. That's right in front of the Computer History Museum. Where all the shareholder meetings take place. Exactly, same location. So we're going to meet up there, spend about an hour and a half. Everyone's going to hang out and charge. Then we're going to drive from there. We're going to be partially on Skyline and end up down at Moss Beach, where we're going to have a private room and a private lunch at the Moss Beach Distillery. Man, I'm looking forward to it. How, so, uh, so you haven't started taking the reservations yet, but, but because last time they they went really quick. They did. So we're going to open up reservations tonight. Uh, it's first come, first serve. We can handle. We can. They can support 40 people for us. So if you're interested in going, sign up right away. Because unfortunately, what we usually have for these events is we have a lot of members and, and community members who typically go. But on the last event, they waited till a week out to RSVP, and it had already completely sold out, booked up, standing room only. So if this is an event you're interested in coming to. I recommend you signing up right away. Walking room only, I guess. But all right, man. Listen, it's good to hang out with you once again in person. I thought we had to do this in person because I wanted to see it, and and I know we got to do some uh, a B-roll later. So uh, good to see you again, man. Great seeing you, Alex. All right. It's always good to hang out with them in person. Uh, this was fun. Um, as you can see, it's not a perfect feature yet, right? It's good enough to be safe. And even though I know there's a couple of videos of people getting hit, but I think they're getting hit by other cars, which would have happened anyway, I think, whether someone was behind the wheel or not. Um, they're obviously going to improve it. Is it good enough right now to be practical? I don't think so. Unless you went to the store or restaurant and you came out as like, pouring rain or hailing like it was earlier here uh, in Sacramento and you can get your car as close as possible so you don't get wet or uh, th then yes but other than that it's not really practical yet uh, but is it practical to showcase this technology hell yeah it, it is definitely and and I, I encourage everybody to do it because um you know this is you're promoting the electric cars you're promoting tesla and electric cars and this is this is what it's all about um by the way don't forget to uh, uh follow um uh, 
Eli, and by the way, if, if you're in California, you gotta you gotta join us, to, you know, for one of his events. Uh, it, you know, as as you know, the the reservations are open now. Uh, it, it's it's a memory. Every time it's just so amazing. It's a memory, and and it's great to hang out with everybody who's into electric cars and Teslas in particular. Um, you, don't forget to also subscribe to his podcast. That's in the description of this video, as well as uh, you know our VIP list uh, link. Uh, subscribe to our VIP list. It's free, and uh, you get a bonus story at the end of every week. Uh, something that we just can't couldn't fit in to this channel or if you're electric.com website so uh, don't forget to do that um all right if you have one of these awesome teslas that uh, can do this let me know what your experience with it is looking forward to all of the comments other than that see you next time and remember to stay charged